Hi everyone, my name is Samir Mayakar, and I'm a co-founder of Synode Systems. We're based out of Northwestern University. And I'm joined here by my fellow co-founders, Carrie Hayner and Joshua Lau, who you'll hear from in just a little bit. Now our story today starts in a very unlikely place, the Vatican. This is a scene from 2005, during the transition between Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict. And it stands at a sharp contrast to the same scene from just a few weeks ago when Pope Francis was announced to the world. <laughs> so the discrepancy between these two scenes highlights something that you all know to be true. We are living in the midst of a mobile revolution. In fact, over the lunch break, I know that this is personal for a lot of you. I saw you using your smartphones, your tablets. Some people had both of them while they were eating. And if your devices are anything like mine, it also means that unfortunately, you're all too familiar with this icon. <laughs> it's what we at Sino call the red battery of death. It's when your day isn't over, but your smartphone's battery life is. Now why is this? Well, those of you familiar with Moore's Law know that semiconductor processing power doubles every 18 to 24 months. That is an applied growth rate of about 40% a year. During that same time period, battery performance in terms of battery capacity has increased at best only one to three percent. So there's a fundamental disconnect between what our semiconductors can do and what our batteries can power. Why is this? Well, today's lithium ion batteries simply cannot store enough energy. The energy storage in a battery is in two main compartments, the cathode and the anode. And the density in terms of energy is all about the number of lithium ions that that component can store. When you charge a battery, the lithium ions migrate from the cathode to the anode. And when you discharge it, they migrate from the anode to the cathode. It forms a current, and then that fuels your device. Now, cathodes have changed over the years, enabling them to store more and more ions. But the anode that's in your smartphones today has remained fundamentally unchanged for the past 20 years since the lithium ion battery was invented. We can change that. We're Synode Systems, and we have developed and patented best-in-class anodes for lithium-ion batteries. We're addressing a $1.2 billion global market just for anodes in the smartphone industry and for intelligence applications. Now, how do we do this? To tell you a little bit more about our technology, I'm going to hand things over to Joshua Lau. Josh is a Master's in Material Science, and he's been working in our lab for over a year developing our technology. Thank you, Samir. Now, Synode has a number of advantages over today's technology. Let's begin with how it will affect you, the end consumer, starting with higher energy capacity. Now, energy capacity is what determines how much charge your battery can hold. More energy capacity, longer lasting devices. Now, today's graphite-based anodes have an energy capacity of about 370 milliamp hours per gram. This is an industry standard unit metric for energy. Now in comparison, Synode is capable of up to 3,200 milliamp hours per gram, almost a tenfold increase in energy capacity at no additional weight. Now in addition to this, Synode is also capable of dramatic reductions in your phone's charge time. Currently, it takes your iPhone 5 about an hour and a half for a full charge. We've been able to safely drive our anodes in the lab at a rate that would be equivalent to a full charge in as little as 11 minutes. So you can see from this, Synode is a dual value proposition technology faster charging, and increased capacity. Now let's dive into the technology that drives this. We start with silicon nanoparticles because they can chemically hold 10 times as much energy as graphite-based anodes. Now the problem with silicon-based anodes is that they swell dramatically during charge cycling. You can see the size disparity between the uncharged and charged silicon particles. It's a difference of about 300%. And it's this swelling that causes these anodes to break down very quickly. It's a huge problem that many of our competitors are trying to deal with right now, but we've de developed an elegant and patented solution. We start with those same silicon nan nanoparticles and embed them between sheets of graphene. Now, why graphene? Well, first, graphene is highly conductive. It's actually one of the most conductive materials that we've ever discovered, and this makes it a prime candidate for use in battery electrodes. Now, second, through a proprietary method, we introduce a network of small pores that allow for rapid charge migration in and out of the bulk of the electrode, as demonstrated by this animation. Now it's this, these pores that allow the rapid recharge times that I just spoke about. 
And finally, graphene is not only strong, but it's also flexible, which means that it can bend to accommodate the volume changes of the silicon, all while retaining its mechanical and electrical integrity. This allows for a very stable performance of our nanos. Now, when you combine these two elements, the final product is a sheet-like material that is both flexible and conducting. This picture actually shows one of our annals being folded in half with no tearing and no permanent deformation. And the most amazing part about this technology is how it's manufactured. We use a solution-based method, which means that you need little more than a high school chemistry set to make it. And this is, of course, very cheap and highly scalable. Now, I realize I just threw a lot at you, so let's do a quick recap. We combine silicon nanoparticles for their increased energy capacity with graphene for the flexible support that it enables, as well as the rapid charging time. Now, it's important to note that both the manufacturing and final product of Sino technology is covered by two patents, both of which we have exclusive rights to. Now, in addition to high performance, Sino is also a game changer for battery assemblers. Today's anodes are provided in a powder-based form. And from this flow diagram, you can see that the process of taking this powder and integrating it into a full battery is a lengthy and complicated process. But because of our unique sheet-like material, we can eliminate almost all of these steps. Sino can be provided to a manufacturer on a spool and then dropped into an assembly line. This saves both time and money by simplifying the assembly process, but also reduces the number of energy-intensive heating steps as well as the number of toxic solvents required for powder-based processing. Now at this point, you're probably all wondering, how much is this going to cost me? Well, as a baseline, we compare ourselves to graphite on a dollar per kilowatt hour basis, or a dollar per unit energy. And graphite anodes in their raw powder form cost about $20 to $25. In comparison, cyanide costs about $25 to $30. However, when you take into account the 20% overhead required for powder-based processing, the two technologies become price comparable, with, with Sinoid being far superior. Now, throughout this entire presentation, we've been comparing ourselves to graphite. But we know this is a crowded space, so how do we stack up against other emerging technologies? On this chart, we have anode capacity in milliamp hours per gram on the y-axis, and then we have scalability on the x-axis, our metric for cost of manufacturing, low, medium, and high. Now, starting with low scalability technologies, we have Amprius and California Lithium Battery. They're both pursuing chemical vapor deposition manufacturing techniques. This requires intense upfront capital, as well as significant heat and high vacuum. Very difficult to do. Now, moving along to medium scalability technologies, we have 3M and Via and Nexion, all of which require high heat again, as well as expensive precursors. Then moving along to the far right of the graph, where everybody would like to be, we have Sino. By far the highest performing technology, as well as the most scalable, due to our solution-based manufacturing method. And I'd like to point out that all the performance that we've demonstrated with Sino today has been published in peer-reviewed scientific journals and validated by Argonne National Labs, the premier battery research institute of the United States. And now I'm going to turn things back over to Samir, who's going to talk about how we're going to bring this to market. Thanks, Josh. So, how will we go to market? Well, it's first important to understand the value chain in this industry. We start with battery materials, cathodes and anodes. Those are then integrated into a full cell battery by a battery manufacturer. And then that battery is placed into a device by a device integrator, like an Apple or a Samsung. Sino plays at the earliest stage in this value chain. We focus on the material space. And it's important to note that in the material space, we have three major Asian competitors who have 70% of the market. So it's important to have scale if you want to compete. And that's why we're not going to go alone as we pursue our market entry. Instead, we'll focus on a capital efficient entry that focuses on partnering with two types of partners. The first are large chemical companies, Hitachi, Dow, BISF, and 3M. These companies will be testing our prototypes later this year because they want to gain access, and preferably exclusive access, to technologies like ours that will help them gain the next best supply contract. The second type of partner will be a large battery manufacturer, someone like an LG Chem or a Johnson Controls. These companies are increasingly vertically integrated. They're starting to make cathodes and buy anode and cathode manufacturers because they too want the best next, next technologies so they can have the next 
best supply contracts, such as those from Apple and Samsung. Now, in terms of our target markets, they're threefold. The first, in the very near term, we're focusing on military and intelligence applications. They value our small scale and high performance. In the medium to long run, we're entirely focused on the smartphone industry because they, again, can value our dual value proposition of charging and capacity. And in the very long run, we can look at the vehicle space, but that's not a near term focus. Now, many of you might be wondering about the case of A123. Those of you who know the battery industry know about A123. You might want to know, how are you guys different? Well, A123 started making the best cathodes in the market. They then raised hundreds of millions of dollars to produce entire batteries. And when they produced those batteries at scale, they had a whole host of quality, safety, and reliability issues. And that's why they went bankrupt. We are operating in the post-A123 era. And that's why Sino and our business model is focused entirely on our core competency of making the best battery materials. In fact, we know that this model is possible and viable. One of our most direct competitors, UK-based Nexion, just recently, uh, two months ago in February, signed a major strategic partnership agreement with German chemical company Wacker. This provided an exit opportunity for their earliest investors. And I'd also like to note that we have published and peer-reviewed results that are three times the performance of Nexion's using a lower cost manufacturing process. So what's this gonna look like financially? Well, in terms of our revenue and EBITDA trajectory, this year we are cash flow positive. Next year, we will be investing more in some of our capital <laughs> equipment, and we expect to be cash flow positive starting in year three onwards. Our revenue comes from two main places. The first is in selling our small batches of materials to battery manufacturers, and the second is via licensing opportunities with larger chemical companies. We'll be able to provide a 15x cash on cash return to our earliest investors, and that will also turn into an 85% IRR if you assume a five-year time horizon. We assume an $11 million EBITDA trajectory in terms of year five exit. And we discount our exit multiple at 50% from industry standards for the sake of conservatism. So how are we gonna accomplish this? Well, we have three main stages in terms of our technical milestones and our funding. The first is our seed round. We've already raised $200,000 to optimize this prototype. Josh will actually pass a few out to you. <laughs> After we optimize this prototype, and I'd also like to point out that that $200,000 is of non-dilutive funding. And we're here at Rice today to raise another $1.5 million to take this prototype and put it in all of your phones. That's phase two. And then over the long run in phase three, once we approve ourselves in a smartphone prototype, we'll start to manufacture at scale with the partner. Now to tell you who's going to do this, I'm gonna hand things off to Kerry Hayner. He's the inventor of our technology and is on the verge of getting his PhD. Thank you, Smith. <laughs> so our team represents the best in Northwestern's diversity. Our technical team is led by Professor Har Harold Kong and myself. Professor Harold Kong is a tenured Northwestern University professor of chemical and biological engineering. He has over 30 years experience in the advanced materials research, and as part of Sino, he's a chair of our technical advisory board. He also knows experts across the globe in academia and industry. I, as Samir mentioned, am Sino's Chief Technology Officer, and I've been working with this technology for more than four years since its inception in our lab. I'm also on the verge of receiving my PhD, and my advisor tells me it must have gotten lost in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily though, I'm currently full-time at Sino, advancing our research initiatives. Assisting me is Joshua Lau, whom you heard from earlier, and Thomas Yu, both of whom hold master's degrees in material science from Northwestern University, and each have more than one year experience working in the lab at Sino. On the business side, we have expertise in finance, operations, and business development, all in the clean energy sector. Additionally, our entire business team is comprised of Cal MBA students from Northwestern. Samir, whom you heard from earlier, is our executive director. He's in charge of financing and day-to-day -day operations. Previously, he led a $1 billion clean energy fund for the Obama administration. He also has expertise from Credit Suisse and Bullock. Nishit Mehta is in charge of our business development, and he's in charge of forming partnerships with industry. Previously, he helped set up the new solar business at Siemens and has experience from two different clean energy venture capital funds. Lastly, Guy Peterson is our commercialization manufacturing director. He's a Lean Six Sigma black belt and he is a former operations consultant from Booz & Company. He also has expertise from GE Energy. We're happy to announce we just opened up a new lab where we're going to advance our research initiative and bring Sino to market as quickly as possible. 
Because at Sino, we don't want you to see this red battery of death ever again. And Sino, we're making today's battery problems a thing of the past. Thank you very much, and we'll take a